Loblaws is an upscale Canadian supermarket owned by the company Loblaw Companies Limited. Hi, my name is Ashley and I am going to be doing a supermarket tour at the Loblaws at 60 Carlton Street, right beside Ryerson University's Madden Athletic Center. Come on, let's go inside and take a tour. First, we're going to be talking about Chapter 1 of the Supermarket Tour by OPRIG called Going to the Market. As you can see, when you first enter the Loblaws, there is only one entrance, so they control where the consumer starts shopping. And they also create a lure by creating a one-stop shop experience. So when you first enter, as you can see, there is a whole floral section, as well as a, a warm food section, gourmet meals, there's a pharmacy, dry cleaners, an LCBO um, upstairs, a medical clinic, a Joe Fresh clothing store, a PC cooking school, the tea emporium, the coffee shop, and many other services in the store. There are also a variety of different sections of the supermarket, such as pre-made gourmet foods, the bakery, the uh, dairy, deli, frozen foods, health and beauty, international foods, a juice bar, a meat section, a salad bar, seafood, a sushi bar, and so much more. Loblaws also displayed some Toronto themed photographs, um, pictures, and a mural wall painting that all represented some history about Toronto. And this really creates, um, it helps to create a community type of feel and make people feel invited and want to stay in the grocery store. I also noticed that as part of the Lear, Loblaws advertised their PC Plus Points program, which makes consumers more likely to purchase products to earn points. This promotes and rewards customer loyalty. I also noticed that the floors and the shopping carts were warm colors such as red or orange, which worked to stimulate hunger and impulse buying. The carts were also extra large and deep, which gives the illusion that using the whole cart for a few items is a waste, thus encouraging the customer to purchase more items. And I also saw that um, they had a conveyor belt for the shopping carts to make it easier for consumers to go up and down the stairs. And this will also help consumers to feel like uh, their shopping experience is more enjoyable. As you may know, most consumers are right-handed and move in a right-handed direction. And I noticed there was a lot of subliminal messaging because there was a natural path to follow because of the layout of the store. And even if I am aware of this, I still fall into the tra that trap of visiting areas or buying things because of how they are laid out. And mo and this technique moves people through the store so they see as many products as possible and increase the amount of items that they purchase potentially. I also noticed that Loblaws was playing very relaxing, bland background music with no lyrics. Um, this music is designed to reduce stress, improve morale, and delay fatigue. It's not meant to distract the consumer, rather it is made to relax them and invite them to shop for a longer period of time. I am now going to talk about the second chapter in the supermarket tour, Aisle 2 Produce. I noticed that in this Loblaws there was a large selection of produce and the produce was displayed at the front of the store. This may be because but the produce is perishable so the supermarket wants to move it quickly and consumers tend to spend more money at the beginning of their shopping trip than at the end so they want to maintain high sales. I noticed that they tried to put balloons and fancy objects around the sale items in order to attract people to buy them near the front of the produce section. I also noticed that a marketing technique that Loblaws used was the placement of a brochure for the non-profit um, Toronto organization Sistering right beside a display of curry sauces and this may be an attempt to increase sales for the product if they think that the grocery store is involved in humanitarian efforts. Now, in terms of the regular price items, I noticed they were more perfect in appearance. They were all identical, um, and there are no blemishes. Now, this makes you wonder how much waste was actually created in order to make everything look so perfect. Um, they also created the look of a good appearance by making everything look abundant. The produce was also organized in a pyramid shape. Even if there isn't, and even if there isn't a high stock of the product, then the rest was pulled to the front to create the illusion of abundance. 
Now, I noticed that these sale items were much less visually appear uh, appealing. They had bruises, blemishes, and mold. So, to attract attention uh, to the consumers, the supermarket placed red or orange sale tags in order to entice the customer to buy the products. And red and orange stimulate hunger in order to get that get rid of that imperfect stock. Now, one must think about how ethical it is to actually sell moldy apples, um, even though it is a sale item. Now, I can praise Lalbaz for coming out with a line of naturally imperfect apples. Um, this could cut down on food waste because instead of just throwing them out if they don't look perfect for the regular price items, they can be sold under the name of naturally imperfect and still profit and save these apples. Now I now, I also noticed that warmer colored produce was placed between cooler colored produce in order to make the produce look more appealing across the department. Um, grocery stores make sure that there's an even distribution of the hunger producing colors like red, orange, and yellow. So there's constant hunger stimulation while clients are shopping. Lalbos also use the technique of boutiquing, which is when more profitable items will typically be placed around staple items. Um, so for example, the salad is placed with the salad dressing, and they also use end-of-aisle displays, which are prime selling locations because consumers pass by them more frequently than they do items placed in the middle of an aisle. Now this encourages impulse buying, and you can see that where they place the kimchi with um, the cabbage, which is a popular Korean food combination. So, um, in terms of label transparency, it is common for grocery stores to distance consumers from the actual sources of their food, um, which really negatively impacts them. And um, I've noticed in Lawbaz that they had a star rating program where they rated. Um, their produce on a scale of one to three stars in terms of quality. Now I do find this helpful so consumers are aware of what type of quality produce they are buying uh, and justify the prices of that. Uh, but I did notice that some of the produce did not exactly look up to par even though they were given three stars um and i but i need to praise um praise lalbaz for the fact that they did label uh whether their foods came from canada or from other places like the usa or mexico now I did notice a negative, um, so basically there was organic tomatoes on the vine where the sign said that it was a product of, product of Canada, but when, upon closer inspection I noticed that it said product of Mexico, so that might have been a case of faulty labeling. And just a side note that uh, Lawbaz prides itself on having Canadian products, now that does reduce the level of food miles. Often in supermarkets, there is the issue of contamination between GMOs, genetically modified organism pr produce, and organic produce. Now, I liked how Loblaws labeled their entire organic section, and for the most part, it was consistent, and the GMO and organic produce was separate, but I did find an instance where um, organic carrots, which were properly labeled as organic, by the way, um, were put together right beside... Um, carrots that were not labeled as organic. Now that may be an instance of contamination. Now there is the issue of pesticides in our produce section. So as you can see I'm comparing um, an apple that is very shiny and probably high, um, highly coated with pesticides and an apple that is not as shiny. So that's just an example of how pesticides cause some of the foods we eat to have high shine and it makes a produce look fresh and nutritious which is what the grocery stores want but you know what's ironic how the foods that we find the most visually appealing have the most harmful pesticides um, now there is the dirty dozen uh, which are the strawberries spinach nectarines apples peaches celery grapes pears cherries tomatoes sweet bell peppers and potatoes which have the most pesticides and then there are the clean 15 
which are sweet corn, avocados, pineapples, cabbage, onions, frozen sweet peas, papayas, asparagus, mangoes, eggplant, honeydew, kiwi fruit, cantaloupe, cauliflower, grapefruit, um, and also bananas can be added to this list. Now, um, another thing that we've noticed is um, the abundance of waxed or shellacked fruits and vegetables. So this includes apples, um, peppers, cucumbers, grapefruit, and fruits and vegetables like that. Um, so the wax may contain fungicides, bactericides, coloring agents, and ripening inhibitors. So um, that's also another thing to keep in mind. I also wanted to add that, as you can see with these apples, as part of a post-harvest treatment, these shiny red apples are coated in pesticides in order to improve its appearance or protect it from bruising and spoiling while it travels. I also noticed that in terms of in-season food um, in Ontario, there is no in-season fruits in the month of April, but in-season vegetables are beets, cabbage, carrots, cucumber, lettuce, mushroom, onions, and so on in the months of April. So I noticed that many of the fruits were imported since it's not in season here, and many of the vegetables were more likely to be from Ontario. I also noticed some helpful signs of the produce with some uses for uh, different foods that might not be commonly known, which could help the grocery store to sell these products if consumers know how to use them. And of course when you get to the checkout line, there's a sign that says that you can shop for groceries online, which increases convenience for the consumer and they might be more likely to buy products. I'd also like to know that upon checkout, um, there are bags of chips and other candies that might not really be necessary. So this is their last chance at trying to get the consumer to buy extra products they don't need. In conclusion, I've learned how supermarkets subtly manipulate us to buy more uh, food items than we need. And as a consumer, it is our job to become more informed so that we may shop smarter. I also learned how corporate culture is ingrained in something as simple as the food system and in our supermarkets. They handle our food. Now as a result, in the future, I will try to be more aware of the marketing and ad strategies that supermarkets use so that I don't fall into those traps and can operate as a more informed consumer. I will also try to buy more in-season foods to reduce my food mileage because of the need to import foods that are currently not in season. It's also important to buy local. This also reduces the need for preservative chemicals as you can freeze or preserve foods for use over the winter and get creative with the food that is available in Ontario at the moment. I will also try to stick to a grocery list to avoid impulse buying in the future and it might be helpful to step into smaller grocery stores because the smaller shops can afford the strategies used by supermarkets to boost sales and this is they use a much more straightforward and customer oriented approach and they tend to be more community based. As well, if I do plan to buy um, produce that is not uh, pesticide free, I should peel my fruits and vegetables um, if I can't make the switch to organic. This would help me to avoid the extra chemicals. And it would also be important to try to buy fair trade products because it is a good alternative approach to guarantee that uh, producers are paid a fair price for their goods. And there have been many things I've learned as a result of the supermarket tour. It's been an amazing experience.